Okay, so big week here for the Indianapolis Colts and even a bigger week for the Jacksonville Jaguars and their embarrassing, no good, pathetic fan base, right? Because as we know, this team is on the verge, potentially, of course, of going 0-5 following what appears to be maybe the end of a Peyton Manning-like dynasty that they had following two 9-8 Seasons, Of course, if you ask the Jaguars fans, that right there was just, you know, on the precipice of being one of the best teams in the NFL. But I digress, right? Actually, you don't know. No, I don't digress. What a bunch of losers, right? The Jaguars can literally go one in 16, right? But if that win is against the Indianapolis Colts, that is enough for those losers that root for that team. For those of you who don't know, actually, not to be just like, you know, it, this is not sour grapes. Maybe it is sour grapes. I, last year, tried to tell Jaguars fans exactly what was coming their way. In fact, I'll make sure, for those of you who didn't see it, to attach it to the back of this episode. But I ended up, like, being all over Jaguars Reddit. One of the guys, oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, I hope he sees this. Duval TV, right? I was re He remixed one of my shorts, made fun of me. It was his most viewed video of all time, okay? They could have been putting all that time into supporting their own guys, their own content creators, and instead like a bunch of losers. They were in the comments section of mine, but that's neither here nor there. I'm happy to go viral on their Reddit once again. Go ahead, Jags fans. Bring it in. Play right in, you bunch of idiots. Goodness gracious. I absolutely hate that fan base more than anything in the world, more than any fan base in football in the world. I guess there's things I hate more than the Jaguars fans, but not many. Not many, right? So as we sit here and we think about this game being important for the division, as Colts fans, right? The Jaguars sit here and their fans now have their Super Bowl in week five. But nonetheless, all jokes aside, a very, very important game for both teams, right? Because you have two things going on at once. Of course, as we know, the Colts have not won in Jacksonville since 2014, to the Jaguars' credit. But the Jags are currently so bad this season that they lost to the Dolphins which is a team that has literally not held a single lead this entire season, if not for the final four seconds against the Jacksonville Jaguars, okay? So the question in this game is simple, right? Are you, as a Colts fan, superstitious, right? The idea of there being a streak in Jacksonville of losses since the year 2014, is that type of thing real? Like, does that type of thing follow you around? Is that like a black cat? a dark cloud that hangs over the Colts organization? Is that type of thing real or is it just a coincidence, right? That's ultimately the question that you have to ask yourself when you look at this game, right? Because it's uncanny the way that's been happening. There's no question about that. And of course, as we sit here with Jonathan Taylor, or rather with no Jonathan Taylor, no Quiddy Pay, no Kenny Moore, as it currently stands, quite possibly no Anthony Richardson, all of the ingredients are there for the Colts for another loss. And by the way, Jaguars fans, if you're still sticking around, if you haven't fallen out of your seat yet, that's not me making an excuse for the Colts, right? That's called an objective analysis of what we're looking at, okay? Something, of course, you'd know nothing about. You wouldn't know anything about football. If football knowledge walked through your door, spit in your face and pulled your pants down and walked out, you'd have no idea what football knowledge was. I mean, you guys are that clueless. But that's neither here nor there. My point in all of this, right, is that the odds with the way the Jaguars have been playing this season and the way the Colts have played in Jacksonville, the odds are basically stacked against both of these teams right now, but somebody has to win the game, right? Right? Well, I mean, that is what we told ourselves. If you remember week one, 2022, the Colts in a streak that still stands of week one losses since 2013 met the Houston Texans who were on an eight game skid against the Indianapolis Colts. We said, well, one of these streaks has to break. As it turns out, they tied, right? They tied. It was a, a, an unstoppable object. Wait, no, an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. Whatever. You know the saying, right? The point is that both of those things were so strong, they couldn't break each other down. So I don't know how to bet on a tie, right? I have no clue. But I know that right now on FanDuel Sportsbook, who does not sponsor me and absolutely should, on FanDuel Sportsbook, this game going into overtime right now is plus 
1300 Now, if you're superstitious, you may call that a pretty good value of a bet. What would you say, given everything I just said, is more likely? One, this game goes into overtime, or two, your 13-leg parlay hits. Just food for thought for you. But either way, listen, all that's out of the way, right? My anger is gone, right? We're calm now. Goose Fraba, we've gotten rid of all of the Jaguars fans in this one, guys. Now it's just us, okay? We're going to talk about how the Colts can win this game. Players that the Colts need to pay attention to. Players that I think are going to be major X factors for us. I guess really it's going to be more of just like a kind of key matchups and, and that type of thing, right? As for the parlay of the week for this game, which we've been normally doing, a lot of player props right now unavailable for the Indianapolis Colts without JT, of course, but the uncertainty around Anthony Richardson, I guess the sports books, perhaps waiting for that to clear up. I will post that to the page as soon as I have it. But without further ado, let's get into the game preview. But before we do, you know what it is. My name is Justin. This right here is the Ride on the Bench Colts podcast. As always, ask anyone on YouTube and enjoying the show. Go ahead, shoot a like. It's going to help me get out to as many Colts fans as humanly possible. Audio listeners, five-star, five-star, five-star review. Let the people know how much you're enjoying it. That does wonders for our visibility on the audio version. If you want to subscribe, be a part of the journey. We're just closing in on 2,800 right now. We want to hit 3,000. My point in saying that is if you keep coming back, you're enjoying the content and enjoying the discussion. Maybe today is the day that you click that subscribe button. Of course, I'm always here for the comments. You guys who are here often know how engaged I am there. The only thing I ask is if you're going to comment, you're going to be part of this discussion. We need this to be a like a safe space to some degree, right? Be civil with one another, right? You don't know what the other person on the other end of that screen is going through that day, and the same can be said about you, okay? So just be civil in the comments section. Without further ado, Let's start talking about this game a little bit. And I want to start on the offensive side of the ball because I think that's where most uncertainty is right now for the Indianapolis Colts. I suppose really you have uncertainty on both sides. But in terms of the unexpected, we don't know what to expect, right, out of the Indianapolis Colts offense. And the question is, let's assume Joe Flacco is the one starting this game. How does this offense change with Flacco? Now, I don't buy the idea that the running game would be at a disadvantage without Anthony Richardson, without Jonathan Taylor, yes, but without Anthony Richardson, I don't know, right? Like, of course you lose a little something in the running game without a player like Anthony Richardson on the field, but it's not like you need a quarterback with that skill set to be an effective running football team. I mean, you look back to um, the year with Carson Wentz for starters, right? That was JT's best year as an Indianapolis Colts. There's many other seasons that I have also seen, right? I mean, off the top of my head, you got Ben Roethlisberger. I know this is kind of a different time in the league, but Ben Roethlisberger wasn't a running quarterback. They had Jerome Bettis, the bus back there, right? Marshawn Lynch in Seattle, et cetera, et cetera. I don't feel the need to mention all the examples. My point is that just because there's no Anthony Richardson is not an excuse in the running game right here. You either agree with that or you don't, right? I could bring up all the examples in the world. It just is what it is. Nonetheless, what a great opportunity this is for Trey Sermon, who I think is a very, very solid running back, too. This is his opportunity to prove it. The Colts, as always, need to lean on this running game to win this football game. Trey Sermon and Tyler Goodson have shown that as a tandem, they can get it done. Remember late last year against the Steelers? What was it, week 15 off the top of my head? They combined for 28 carries and just under a buck 50 on the ground against a game Steelers defense that right there will work right against any team with any running backs that you possibly have so you couple that with the fact that Joe Flacco has a bigger arm than Minshew is more experienced than Minshew Flacco also went for over 300 yards and three touchdowns when he was on the Browns last year against the Jaguars this team has everything they need in place to get the job done I think if the Colts are able to avoid turnovers and score more than 20 points that's kind of the recipe to win this game against the Jaguars. The question really becomes for the Colts, which Colts defense shows up, right? If everything I just said on offense happens, which defense shows up, right? That is the deal that you make as an offense and a defense is that 20-point swing, right? 20 points is the number. A good offensive day, the defense is asking the offense, can you score us 20 points? And the offense is asking the defense, can you hold them to under 20, right? That's kind of that teetering point, if you will, right? That's kind of the point, okay? It's the deal that you make. But as of right now, the Colts defense has a little bit of a split personality. Obviously, we know what we saw 
in the beginning of the season, but we know what we've seen as of late against the Bears and the Steelers, offenses that haven't been that great. But you look at the Jags offense and you say, okay, they're not doing anything all that special whatsoever, right? Bottom 10 in total yards, bottom 10 in passing, about average in the running game, a place we know that we saw the Colts struggle early on. But this is an offense that is bottom three in points per game. They've only scored 20 points in all of one game this season so far. The same could have been said about the Steelers coming into last week's game. But with all of that said, I mean, you look at the Jaguars and what they've been able to do against the Colts recently. Last year, I believe, let me just pull it up real quick. You had the Jaguars drop, what was it, 20 or rather 37 points and 31 points against us, right? Let me go pull it up real fast. Stick with me. Okay, so the Jags last year scored 37 and 31. And the year before that, they scored 27, 24. 2022, they scored 26. Point being is this offense has had success against this Colts unit, which, as we know, is very similar to the one we've seen in the years past. So the question is, as I said, which Colts defense is going to show up? Like, I'd imagine if you're the Jaguars, you're going to try to establish the run early. That's been where they've been their strongest, to establish some type of rhythm against this Colts defense and just kind of let them settle in, right? I mean, not Trey Sermon, Travis Etienne, Tank Bixby, those are two talented runners, right? But I think if the Colts put their foot down early here and force the Jaguars to play behind the sticks, you force them into a third and seven, third and eight, that type of stuff, you're going to put Trevor Lawrence in a similar spot to where he's been for much of this season, which is just needing to do a little bit too much, right? Just having to force the action just over 50% completion percentage for Trevor Lawrence right now. He's been mightily inefficient, um, and something just does not seem right in Jacksonville right now. I mean, to some degree, kind of what you're seeing in Jacksonville is reminiscent of Doug Peterson's run in Philadelphia with Carson Wentz, right? Of course, this is just without the success in the Super Bowl ring. Then again, if you ask the Jaguars, 9-8 and eight basically is the equivalent of winning a Super Bowl. But you see a guy in Trevor Lawrence that to some degree appears to be regressing, not that that specifically has to do with this game, all I'm saying is that lends to the fact that if the Colts can just hold the Jaguars to third and six, third and seven for a good majority of this game, I think it puts them in a good position to win this one. Now, you talk about key players, key matchups. You got Zaire and EJ Franklin. Zaire Franklin and EJ Speed right off the bat. As I said, two talented running backs, Travis Etienne, Tank Bigsby. Both of those guys are down to play. Both of them are going to run the football effectively. If you don't come in and make the tackles, you got to let them know who's who. You got to let them know that you're there and ready to meet them in the middle, right? That just is what it is. Whoever for the Indianapolis Colts ends up lined up on Christian Kirk without Kenny Moore. I don't know if it's going to be Womack, Chris Lamont, Julian Blackman, a committee of all three of them. I don't know how they're going to go about that business. Whoever is lined up on him has to show up today. I mean, they need a plan for Christian Kirk. I can say all I want about the Jaguars. It's about the fan base. I think they have some good players. And Christian Kirk is some football player. I mean, he is a very, very, very good slot receiver, right? Some maybe we even would say the best in the league. Obviously, we have one in Josh Downs ourselves. But Christian Kirk been doing it at a high level for quite a period of time. They're going to have to make sure that they're able to at least keep him contained, right? The interior offensive line for the Indianapolis Colts, they got to go in there and get it done. You have a guy in Trey Sermon starting this week who is best as a downhill in-between-the-tackles runner. The Jags overall have been solid, really, against the run, right? Particularly when you consider the fact that they've been down so often in so many games. Under four yards per carry allowed for this team? I mean, that's good work. Now, we know they're not the Pittsburgh Steelers, all of that being said, right? So we know what the Colts just were able to do to the Pittsburgh Steelers on the ground. If the Colts come out here, they got to set the tone early. And if the Jags have enough confidence in themselves... They could stick around. If not, I don't think they'll be able to keep their head in the game. That's, though, as the Colts, you have to put this Jaguars team to the test. Can they keep their morale, their team morale, high enough if you come out and get a hot start with what we've seen transpire this year? If I'm the Colts, that's the mentality I'm coming into this game with. Now, if you're asking for a game prediction out of me, I won't give one. But here's what I will say, and this is an honest opinion. What seems more likely to you as a football fan? The Colts at this juncture being 3-2 and two coming out of this week or the Jaguars being 0-5? If you can figure out my answer to that question or you can answer that question, 
you're going to figure out exactly what my gut is telling me about this football game. But without further ado, that right there is the game preview for the Jaguars. My name is Justin. This right here was the Ride the Bench Colts podcast. And as always, go Colts. All right, we got a special one cooked up just for the Jaguars fans today. No intro. I'm not going to put you through it. Now, Jaguars fans, question for you. Do you have enough of an attention span to listen to this video for five to seven minutes? Because I know the sheer fact that I am talking in my Colts memorabilia and my room is set up with Colts stuff. I know you're foaming at the mouth, ready to just get into the comments section and rip me apart, okay? This I understand, and I want to clarify my position on the rivalry where things stand, this past game, the whole deal, because I think it's been misconstrued. Now, of course, I wouldn't expect anything less because no Jaguars fan ever would have the sense that God gave geese, okay? So I'm not going to give you any more credit for your intelligence that I know you don't have, all right? But I think you think that I am just mad that the Jaguars won and that's all this is, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. Just like you, I wanted to go in and win that game. I understand what's on the line. That was a huge game for both teams. Jaguars came on top, came out on top, pause. They came out on top and they deserve it, okay? So let me get some things out of the way about the Jaguars team so you guys don't think I'm just delusional, all right? The Jaguars are the best team in the AFC South, okay? They're an up-and-coming team. They're better than the Indianapolis Colts, not just this year. They were better than the Colts last year. They've beaten the Colts every time they've played them in Jacksonville since the year 2014. Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback in the division. Doug Peterson is one of the best coaches to go through the NFL in the past 20 years, and I love, really, him as a coach, and I like a lot of the guys on your team as talent. I think the organization, with what they have been through, deserve, particularly in recent years with Urban Meyer kicking Jason, you know, who is it, uh, Josh Lambeau, the whole deal, right? The team, the players, the organization deserve the success, the minimal success that they've had in the past two years, and that is coming their way. But you, the fans, on the other hand, this is what I don't want you guys to miss because you think I'm salty. I understand. Perhaps I am, but I am a truth teller as well. And whether you believe it or not, whether or not you think I'm a schmuck, I promise I'm your friend, okay? I'm here to help you, all right? Everyone needs somebody in their life that tells them the news that they don't want to hear, okay? So I want to let you guys know how you look, not just to Colts fans right now as you talk smack, but to the rest of the league, okay? Because I've made videos about the Titans, the Texans, right? We have versed everybody in the division this year, you guys multiple times. The Jaguars fans were the only ones that came in both before and after the game with something to say. You guys were the only ones ones, all right? You ever hear the saying, act like you've been there before? Now, I know you haven't. I understand. I know a win against the Colts is like a Super Bowl for you guys. I get the whole thing, but what bothers me about all of y'all is that you couldn't find the Jaguars fan before the past two seasons. You couldn't find the Jaguars fan in the damn stadium, which is exactly why the Jaguars have been playing in London, and the NFL has had talks about moving them to London, because you guys are bandwagon fair weather supporters, okay? You only show up when times are good, and that's almost never. But now here you are, out of nowhere, coming out of the woodworks. And how many people are there in the United States of America, by the way? This is the part that gets me the most, and you guys need to understand. There's what? 400 million people in the United States of America, maybe a little bit less. And I know that I have listeners overseas. So between the 400 million people in this country, and the people overseas that listen, when one of my videos goes through its cycle, which is about like 48 hours, I'm able to muster up anywhere from one to 2,000 people watching one of these videos. That's not a lot of people, okay? And this is made specifically for Colts fans, this channel. So if you as a Jaguars fan not only fall into one of that one to 2,000 people, but also are in the comment section talking smack at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Monday, I hate to break it to you, but someone has to tell you. You're a nerd, all right? That makes you a dork. It's a weird thing to do. And I'm just letting you know, and if you need some advice, if you need to pick up a new hobby or, or, or get a job, I mean, listen, I'll write a reference for you. I'll do whatever you need. I'll help you out. But right now, you guys look like you lack a little bit of self-awareness. I don't want to just talk about old news to talk about old news, but you guys are the second worst winning percentage in the history of the National Football League. 
And only now can you guys muster up a record just barely above 500, okay? Just now. This just happened. So have a little bit of sustainability before you guys start coming in and talking smack like you've been great for the past 10 years, okay? Because you haven't. Now, again, do I think the Jags have a bright future? Yes, I think the team has a bright future, and I think they deserve everything coming their way. But the fans? Oh, my Lord, you guys make me sick. Have you ever played pickup basketball? Do you have a group of guys you play with now? Listen, I know you might not have any friends. That would make sense to me, given the fact that you're a Jaguars fan. It all makes sense to me. But just imagine a world where some people liked you, and you actually had a group of people you played pickup basketball with. Imagine the worst guy on the court. He's been the worst guy on the court for years. Never made a shot, never did anything right. All of a sudden, pops a jump shot in your face and makes it. And he starts chirping to everybody on the court, okay? Do you see how not only would that be irritating to the person he hit the shot on, which, by the way, if you're not following the metaphor, because, again, I know you're not intelligent, the guy that he made the shot on is me. That's I'm the Colts fan, okay? Not only would that be irritating to the guy he made the Colts, that he made the shot on, and I'm tripping up on my words, boom, now I'm the idiot. You see how it works? It all comes full circle. But not only is that going to bother the person you made the shot on, right? That's going to bother everybody else on the court that has watched you suck for years because you talking smack after a smidge of success makes you look like you completely lack any self-awareness, like you're a complete front runner and not for anything you are. And just a reminder, if you're here talking smack in case nobody told you, you're kind of a nerd. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Oh my goodness. Jags fans. Listen, Duval. I'm sorry. Oh gosh. This is amazing, right? I, some of you have never seen me before, and that and that's totally fine. But, you know, I did have a feeling that this day would come eventually. I mean, did you guys think that you just bullied me off the internet? Did you think that for some reason you would not see this beautiful face again talking about your Jacksonville Jaguars? And last time I had anything to say about the Jacksonville Jaguars, it was the day after the Indianapolis Colts lost to them for the second time securing the fact that the Jaguars swept us for the season. And you thought that everything I was saying was simply just sour grapes because the Colts lost. I had all these things to say about Jaguars fans, blah, 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 right? What you don't understand is that I don't hate teams. I don't hate players, right? I hate fan bases. That's what gets me the most are fan bases. And if you need any evidence that it wasn't just me being sour over a loss, go ahead, check the last video I made, I mean, it was literally after the Texans knocked us out of the playoffs. I was so nice to the Texans fans. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because Texans fans are class. They were class personified. But you, the Jaguars fans, you're nerds. You're dorks. I, I mean, it is what it is. I don't listen. I don't hold it against you, right? I'm just letting you know in case you were not aware. And clearly, you guys aren't the most self-aware bunch that there is, I told you guys then, and I'm going to tell you again now, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you, right? I'm trying to be your friend, and I was trying to give you some friendly advice. And here is why the Jaguars losing the AFC South is, is so funny, right? Because I know you guys are just like two months removed from being a dynasty that would rule the AFC South for years to come, right? I know that is what you guys thought. So I'm going to explain this one more time. For those of you who hadn't seen this before, I'm going to explain it to you again. And for those of you who did see it, perhaps your ears will be a little more open now. Perhaps today you have the sense that God gave geese and you could say, oh, Justin, you were right. We were wrong. We're stupid. We're Jags fans, right? <laughs> Here's what it is, all right? I knew the Jaguars were just like the other two teams that finished towards the end of the season in the AFC South. Ready for this? Pretty good. Pretty good. Here's the thing. The Jags are a good team with good players, right? Pretty good. Not great. Pretty good. Just like the rest of the division. But here's the difference. And here's the difference that makes it just hysterical for me to watch, right? Is that you guys, and I don't blame you. You've never seen anything that even remotely resembled 
any form of success in your entire life. So you wouldn't know success if it came flying through your door and slapped you in the face and pulled your pants down. You'd have no clue that success was right there in front of you, right? I understand. But the Texans and the Colts came into the season with no expectation whatsoever. I don't think the Colts are one of the top five teams in football, right? But you guys thought that you were one of the top five teams in football. You guys really thought that you were already there in the nerve of some of you to say, oh, we had to deal with this with Peyton Manning all those years. You guys are comparing a 9-8 and eight season to, to, to the Colts dynasty of the early 2000s. And listen, I'm not here to say that the Colts are like amazing. I'm not here to argue about the Colts credentials versus the Jags credentials. Quite frankly, you'll lose that argument and it's totally fine. But what I'm trying to teach you is a lesson in self-awareness. You didn't realize what you were looking at and you got caught. And it's totally fine because we're all here to watch it happen. And the truth always comes out if you give it enough time. Duval, let's go. We'll see you next season.